Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to install the new Jupyter Visual Debugger. We are going to run it into a Jupyter Lab instance, create a notebook and have a look at its features. And this is the Jupyter Debugger uh, GitHub repo. You can see that uh, pretty much the preview here says it all, along with the uh, notebook on the left, which is the standard thing that you get from the Jupyter Lab instance. You have uh, something new right here, and I'm going to walk you through the steps how you can get all of this into your own Jupyter uh, instance. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to do is to have a Conda environment, and the Conda uh, Conda installed on your computer, and Conda is available on Windows, macOS, and Linux. Uh, I've tried installing this uh, Jupyter Lab extension on using a virtual env and pipenv but uh, unfortunately the pi pi wheels are still in experimental stage and they didn't work out great for me at least on ubuntu so um, hopefully you should have your anaconda installation or conda installation and after you got that running um, I'm going to show you how to do the installations by creating a new environment, installing the necessary packages, installing the extensions, and I'll walk you through an example. Uh, there is a very good blog post that appeared uh, this week on Medium a, a, or the blog of the Jupyter project, and it's called A Visual Debugger for Jupyter. Uh, in here you can pretty much follow the same steps uh, that I'm going to show you, but uh, and you can you can have a deeper look into how you can use all of this and also they give you a somewhat deeper dive into the implementation specific details on how all of this is working unfortunately currently there is a big limit i would say a big limitations uh, limitation on on this debugger and is that it it currently doesn't work with the standard ipy kernel so you will have to install a new uh, kernel which is called Xeos or something like that. Yeah, Xeos Python. And I believe this one is provided by Microsoft. Yeah, let me go and check. Okay. Uh, so this is kind of a experimental uh, kernel for Jupyter Lab uh, or Jupyter Notebooks. And you can try it out, uh, read the docs. And do whatever you like but in this tutorial i'm going to focus on some simple uh, python implementations and a code walkthrough so it should be running just fine in our case okay so let's start with the installation i'm going to open a terminal and in here i have a simple uh, empty directory uh, you can see that i have conda installed and i'm going to start by creating a new environment I'm going to name it ML and I want to specify a Python version of 3.82 and yes I want to install all of those packages okay so I'm going to activate it using conda activate ML as it is written over here and uh, now I want to install a couple of packages that I would need to run the Jupyter and the Nuxius or whatever its name is uh, kernel. So I'm going to start with conda install Xeos Python. I'm going to install the notebook package, the Jupyter Lab package, and I'm going to specify that I want to get those from the conda forge. So this should be running right now and it's fetching a lot of packages in here so it should take some time okay i want to install all of those and you if you are familiar with uh, conda this is just standard installation steps actually all right so everything is complete it might take a bit longer on your computer uh, because i've already have uh, the cached versions of all of these packages i believe so this might be uh, a bit slower on your machine 
and uh, now we have everything uh, in place so the next thing that we need to do is to actually install the JupyterWAP debugger extension and you can do that by using this command Jupyter WAP extension so this will ex uh, add a new extension install and JupyterWAP debugger so this is uh, basically pointing to the github repo jupyterwap debugger all right and this should take just a bit now that the installation is complete i'm going to go ahead and start the jupyterwap instance this should open a new tab in your browser and it should look like this and here you can see that we have the debugger already expanded. I'm going to close that up. And uh, we have the new kernel, which is XPython. So I'm going to click this. And uh, the first thing in here I'm going to do is to go here and increase the font size a bit. So you can guys see this a bit better. I'm going to also expand this. All right, once more. And once again for the code font size. All right, so uh, I'm going to enable the debugger by clicking this toggle here. Okay, and I'm going to create a demo list. Uh, like something that contains one, two and three and I'm going to iterate over it okay so now that the debugger is enabled you can go ahead and click uh, create actually a breakpoint by tapping this point here and I'm going to execute this and execute this and you can see that we have the demo list in the variable sections in here uh, and yeah if you toggle this actually you can see the variables in a nicer format some sort of a table which is great and you can have a tree view of those as well let me see if I can increase the font size for this uh, doesn't appear to be working yeah um, you can get a table or a tree view in here and you can also continue the execution, stop it and go to the next step. I'm going to continue with this. Currently we have i which is equal to one. So this is the first element in our list. If I go ahead and do this again, we will have i equal to two, which is the second element and so on and so on. Okay. So I'm going to now give you a bit more practical example of how you can use the debugger. I'm going to remove those two cells from here and I'm going to restart the kernel. I'm going to once again enable the debugger and enable the tree view of the variables. So this example is going to be a bit contrived, but at least it's going to show you the basics of how you can use the debugger in practice. Okay, so I have a, f a few YouTube uh, favorite, uh, let's say, people that I follow and I'm going to list those and I'm going to list the number of subscribers that they have. Then I'm going to filter out the doctors from those uh, YouTube people. And finally, I'm going to have a look at the fraction of subscribers in the doctors compared to the all of the subscribers and once again this is going to be just a contrived example so let's start with the names of the youtube uh, people that i'm following uh, the first one is going to be greg not a doctor duchet or duchet next i'm going to write in dr Jordan Feigenbaum then Dr. Austin Baraki 
Uh, let me increase the font once more. All right. Uh, Dom Mazetti and Kevin Oak. The next thing that I'm going to do is to write out the number of subscribers for each YouTuber. And Dom Mazetti has a lot of those, over 2.3 million. Okay, so I'm going to execute this. And next I want to have a look at only the doctors. So to filter out the doctors, I'm going to just use a simple uh, string matching. I'm going to write the doctors along with their names and the number of subscribers into a dictionary. And I'm going to iterate over uh, the names and subscribers. And if the name contains doctor, I'm going to add it to the dictionary. All right, so here I want to show you how you might want to use the debugger. I'm going to set a breakpoint here and I'm going to run through this code. And yeah, you can see that debugger actually hit the breakpoint. And currently the doctors is an empty dictionary and we are looking at Greg Duset. So his name contains not a doctor and in fact he is going to be added to the doctor's uh, dictionary. And uh, we have the if statement here. So if I step, uh, go to the next step, you can see that we are entering the if condition and this line is going to be executed. I'm going to continue with the execution and since we are in a for each loop, we are going to hit the breakpoint again. All right, so next is Dr. Jordan Fagenbaum and again, he also is a doctor uh, and he's a real doctor. And if we step into this, again, we are hitting this one. So next is Dr. Austin Baraki, and you can see that the number of doctors in the dictionary is actually increasing. And uh, Dr. Austin Baraki is again also a doctor. So now the doctors are, uh, we have a three, three doctors in the dictionary and currently we are going to look at Dom and his subscribers uh, count is very large, but he is not a doctor, so we are not going to step into the next line. And finally, we are looking at Kevin Oak, and he is also not a doctor, so no stepping into this. And this pretty much should give you the doctors. And if we see, yeah, we have other three doctors, including Greg Duset, who is again not a doctor. And those are the, their names and their subscriber count. Next, I am going to um, make, to sum up the number of uh, subscribers into the doctor's dictionary and I am going to calculate the number of all subscribers. And I'm going to take the values from the dictionary here and I'm going to get the subs count by summing the subs. Here uh, you can also set a breakpoint and get the value of the intermediary uh, computation which is going to be the doctor subs and if I run this with uh, shift enter you can see that we have the sub count which is uh, sorry we have the doctors the doctor subs which is this number right here uh, 365k roughly and next we have the next computation which is going to be the sum of all subscribers in all the YouTubers that we have. So to calculate the fraction of uh, subscribers that go with the doctors only, or not only but with the doctors, is going to be doctor underscore subs and I'm using the out complete with tap divided by the all subs. 
So this comes up to roughly 13.1%. I hope you had some fun with uh, this data set. And this is pretty much uh, the Jupyter Visual Debugger. Uh, it looks like a very useful tool. You can uh, head out to the GitHub repo and follow the... Oh, let me start this, actually. And you can follow the progress and uh, hopefully those guys will uh, continue with implementing more cool stuff. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channels for more videos like this. And uh, have a look at the visual debugger. It looks like a really cool tool. And hopefully you can now install and run it on your machine.